everybody. Um, it's been a while since I posted a video here on my YouTube channel. Uh, today I've decided to make a video. I, I went on Facebook a couple uh, about a, an hour, an hour and a half ago. And I looked at uh, possibly Jeff Jarrett wants to repurchase um, TNA. Him and his father founded Total Nonstop Action, NWA, originally called NWA TNA. National Wrestling, National Wrestling Alliance Total Nonstop Total Nonstop Action, if I can say it. But um, the history of that, well, why I'm talking about this is it, it, that that company has a soft spot in my heart, mostly because I have like a shit ton um, of uh, VHS tapes. Um, they were not really well taken care of a lot of the footage is pretty brutal but i, I do remember um the way i, I the, the way i um actually heard about tna and wa tna back then was a magazine i don't remember where what magazine it was uh it's probably somewhere uh, in the shed or something like that upstairs I, I don't really feel like searching everywhere for the magazine um, but yeah, um, it's, it was a little company. I started to order the, uh, two hour pay-per-view on Wednesday. Uh, it lasted from 2002 till I think late 2004, September, August, September, October, something like that, 2004. And then they went three hour, uh, per month pay-per-view, the two hour pay-per-views. I 2002 I was it 2002 I think it was 2002 I ordered the first pay-per-view and then I I didn't order until 2003 they they had amazing shows um they had amazing stars back then they had um Samoa Joe they had the most underrated superstar in my opinion that never became a megastar and could have been somebody. And a fun fact about this, because it's a shame about him, he was too small. He was originally Christopher Daniels, uh, the um, uh, the fallen angel Christopher Daniels, was supposed to be the leader of, um, of uh, ministry. It was supposed to be the, the, the person to uh, get revealed as the leader of the ministry and all that. But Vince thought he was too small. He's not really big, big enough and such. And he, he scrapped it and it was Vince. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. And then... <laughs> And then, and then Jim Ross, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm glad I don't remember. But yeah. Um, it didn't last long. <laughs> it was a god awful, god awful thing. Um, but it's amazing, amazing wrestler. Uh, the fallen angel. Um, certainly in the early days of uh, AEW and all that, he was amazing. With, uh, can't remember what the name, what their name was. Ah, damn it. Uh, there was Christopher Daniels, and my 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 memory is pretty fuzzy right now. But um, yeah, you had uh, Chris Sabin. You had a lot of uh, small guys uh, back then uh, that that could deliver you some of the most amazing fucking matches you've ever seen. Um, a lot of the probably one one of my favorite match that I wish that they would bring back originally the way it was is the Ultimate X. Originally, it wasn't a like uh, a cage and everything. It was like just uh, a rope, like uh, like like a ring rope, uh, just an X and everything. And you had to like jump on on the thing and, and everything and just go grab the the X belt. Um, I, I love the concept and what I loved, what I would love the X division to be what it used to be. It's, uh, I can't remember what they say. It's not about, 
it's not about limit. It's about uh, no. I, I can't remember. I cannot remember. The, there was a certain quote they they, they they said with that. I wish they would bring back. Um, it's about. It's not about. I don't remember how they say it. But the, there was a little thing that they said with the, the X Division title and all that. Uh, like a heavyweight um, wrestler can could wrestle for the freaking belt. Uh, lightweight wrestler, uh, whatsoever, no weight limit. So I, I loved uh, the way they, they presented the title back in the day. I loved it. Uh, Triple X was amazing. Um, probably the cancer of <laughs> wrestling, Vince Russo. Um, Jeff Jarvis was, was there and all that. He he tried to um, not let Russo do what he did in WCW and a lot of the bullshit and everything that he did. Um, but yeah, it's uh, there was a lot of stupid stuff in the early days. A lot of stuff that didn't make sense. But the more they, uh, they, they, they went year by year by year, it came to a point that TNA was about to be, not be WWE, but become the level of WWE, like the same level, the same level, I don't know why I'm doing this, the same level as WWE, because it was amazing, the wrestling was amazing, the storylines were amazing, uh, everything was fucking amazing, you had Sting, Christian Cage, Samoa Joe, um, the, the most underrated star in that company, and to this day, I wish that he would have come back to TNA, but he's going to retire in WWE, AJ Styles, the phenomenal one. And it's just really a shame the way he treated him at the end before he quit and all that. Just the guy created the company. He, uh, he, to me, honestly, AJ Styles was the sting of TNA. Because that guy, from the first minute... You know he was going to be a megastar. You fucking knew he was going to be something. Um, he, he, he had some of the most amazing matches. Um, oh my god, it's, it was so amazing. Um, and then later on, Kevin Nash and a lot of the, the other uh, veterans and all that came in and... Uh, Ra Raven came in, Scott Levy came in, uh, aka Raven came in, um, and the the early days they, they had VKM, VK, uh, v VMK, VK, something like that. It was um, Road Dog. Who was it? Road Dog. And our truth, and the other person I don't remember. Uh, what was it? They, they were just basically making fun of Vince McMahon and everything. Just, it, it was it was a lot of times it was funny and all that because our truth is probably one of the funniest person that you will ever meet. Um, <laughs> he's so funny. Um, and then. Well, when they went to uh, one pay-per-view a month in 2004, uh, what I liked about TNA was the opening. Uh, me, honestly, when you want to have a good pay-per-view, you have to have a good opening. This is what I miss about wrestling. You have to have like something that will grab your attention. Oh, this show's going to be fucking amazing. It, I, I have to fucking order it. I have to watch it because I remember back in the day, uh, the the first um, couple three hour pay per views and all that, the, the big uh, the big Kahuna that that they they, they did was amazing. Um, there was a lot of flops in pay per views. They learned, but yeah, it was it, it was so amazing. Um, probably one of my favorite match has to be. The tag team, was it the tag team, the ultimate, ultimate X? Um, I don't remember when one wrestler just went on top of the the steel cage and all that, 
and just did a flip. Uh, just took the guy and flipped him. It just, oh, it was, it was, it was fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we, we advanced, we, we went further and further and further. And then Hogan Bischoff came in. And to me, that was the sign. That was the day. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Because it was horrible. Not until they brought it back as TNA. I, I haven't watched that company since uh, that day. But I, I, I do like listen to people and do watch videos once in a while. But I, I did watch a whole bunch of videos about the, those days, how horrible it was, how the wrestling was and everything, and how Hogan took the company. And me, honestly, if I if I would have brought Hogan in and all that, the, the only way you're going to come in is you have to put people over. He never fucking... He probably put a couple people... A couple persons over and all that. But everybody knows. Hogan's Hogan. Terrible A. was a terrible A and all that. He looks for himself. He doesn't give two shits. It's just... Talking about WWE for a minute. The guy could have... The guy could have given a rub to Michaels. Could have given a rub to Randy Orton. Could have given... Could, could have given a rub to a lot of people in that company. But no. No. It had to be his way or the highway. And this is why I hate Ogan so much. Not a lot of people can say that they got over on Hogan. And it's frustrating seeing a star like that. But uh, yeah, you, you know, he doesn't really give that give a crap, he, he knows he's a megastar, so, whatever, anyways, going back, and then, Dixie Carter took complete control of that company, oh my god, and one of the biggest mistakes, and I have chills right now, is lying to the network. Lying to the network that you didn't have Vince Russo. But when the network find out, found out, you lost everything. You had something in that goddamn company. But you were two moronic idiots. Too stupid to figure out. Too stupid to realize. To me, honestly, Hogan, Bischoff, and Carter are three of the most toxic people. I hope that Hogan or Bischoff or even Vince Russo never make it to All Elite Wrestling. If they do, I will stop watching All Elite. Because those guys, they couldn't give a shit about any of the boys in the back. They don't give a damn about the wrestlers. It's about them, them, and them. How much fucking money, how much how much can we screw these people over? And still year by year by year, people still want to fucking hire these people. It's it's frustrating. I understand Bischoff did an amazing job in WCW with the NWO and everything. It was, it was Ted Turner's money. If he didn't have Ted Turner's money and all that, WCW would have never been what it was. Anyways, yeah. Dixie Carter, to me, honestly, one, one of the most idiotic persons that should have never, ever run a, a wrestling business. To me, honestly, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett must have been pissed. I think not too long after that, Jeff quit. Or he just gave up. And 
Jeff had, pa I, you could say whatever you want about Jeff Jarrett, but the guy has passion in his business. He has fucking passion in his goddamn business. He knows his father ran a business with um, Jerry Lawler and all that a company. Memphis. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. Now, Jeff wants to buy TNA again. I don't know if he's going to be able. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all if WWE is going to swoop in and buy TNA. Um, I, I would rather Jeff just buy the company and just leave it the way it is. Because what, what if WWE buys it, they're going to create... Um, a develop a developmental system and all that. They, they don't really give a crap about TNA. They don't give a crap about about a lot of the stars and all that. They don't. Okay, they'll they'll take a lot of the stars and they'll bring them to WWE. Other than that, they don't really give a damn about the TNA and the history of the, the company and everything. There's a lot of things I, I forgot. Uh, about TNA, NWA, TNA, TNA, and and uh, Impact, and the Impact days, I didn't really watch it, but it really makes me want to get the network back again. Just watch um, the original pay per views, three hour pay per views, and all that, two hour pay per views. Me, I, what I think is going to happen is. I do think that WWE is going to buy it. And mostly they're, they're only buying it for the for the, the superstars, the people that they care for. Moose, Moose surprises me that the guy's never been hired by either AEW or WWE. The, the guy's mega talented. Um, there, there's so much mega talent in TNA, man. Certainly the women's division. Oh. With um, one woman, what was her name again? Ah, damn it! Um, she she used to be an NWA. Another company. <laughs> uh, just another little thing. Another company that used to be amazing. Uh, Billy Corgan, the the um, singer of uh, Smash and Pumpkins, owns NWA. Um, uh, what was his name? Titus Tyson Tyson. Uh, used to be Funkasaurus in WWE. One of the biggest mistakes they've ever they've ever done, and I, I watched a documentary about that. Is given the title to the guy. The guy has zero talent, zero, um, nothing. He does not have charisma. He can barely wrestle. And, yeah. I don't know why they ever gave him the fucking title. <laughs> it's it just really... It just takes one one person. One fucking person to kill a company. You can have one person that creates your environment, your company. You just bring it something amazing and then one day a light pops oh I'm going to do this and it just completely fails miserably that's what happened to TNA that's what happened with uh, when Vince was there a lot of the shit Vince didn't give a damn about any of the fans he didn't give a damn about any of the people working for him and all that it was Vince um Vince's world, Vince's idea. He didn't give a damn about anybody else but himself. When he was younger and all that, I do think Vince cared because a lot of the stuff, man, back in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, amazing. Me, honestly, if you had a guy like Jeff Jarrett bring it back, brought, bring back TNA to its former glory, the way it was. Um, and bring back Scott Demore. 
Because I, I would like it if Scott Demore would come back because the guy's a genius. Man, he's been there since almost the beginning of the fucking company. He's one of the, the, the first few originals left. Was one of the first few originals left in that company. But anyways, um, <laughs> enough of me complaining, bitching, and moaning. Um, if any of you people out there, gals, girl, uh, gals, girls, yeah, gals, guys, dogs, cats, hamsters, parrots, whoever wants to uh, give their opinion and all that in the bottom. Anyways, good day.